Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Matthew 15, 21. Now in Matthew 15, 21, the Bible says, Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Zidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after her. And he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then, she, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Somebody shout hallelujah. This woman, very clearly, is a gentile. She's a gentile. Presupposing that in the first place, she's not even supposed to be someone we consider in the mouth of miracles. She does not deserve a miracle. You understand what I'm saying? Quote in quote. Now, Jesus was a God of compassion. You all know that. The Bible says he was moved by compassion he healed. We know him to be a loving God. We know him to be a compassionate God. We know him to be a forgiving God. We know him to be a merciful God. We know him welcoming all the sick, the beggarly, the weak, and those that are distraught, disadvantaged, and all manner of things happening to them. That is the Jesus we know. Everybody knows that when you go to this God, he will heal you. When you walk to him, he will deliver you. When you go to him, he will change your life. He, he is just there to do good to everybody that comes to him. And now here, in history, is an event and an affair that quite does not relate to the picture of this Christ I'm expecting. I imagine the onlookers who have an opinion on how Jesus should do things. You know, we also have those people. Who always watch from the side and judge matters in the mind of men, not the mind of the spirit? You know those kinds of people? Eh? They were there in every time. Praise God. Now I'm imagining also, this woman is coming for healing. And Jesus ignores her. And then there are also these people on the side saying, Take at one is that he is. Why is she disturbing Jesus? You understand? But this is, this is another person also in the same event there. Saying, hey, what is this guy, the son of God? Seriously, no. Can, can a man of God do that? No, 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 seriously. Anita, can a man of God do that? I'm full of compassion, sent by God. It's my king of kings. Redeemer, it's my of the helpless. Why well, here he healed some people in Copenhagen. Can you believe a woman went there one day? And the work and Jesus, you know, you know, you know, giving her, you know. <laughs> you, my women, we know you, we just don't talk. Men shout hallelujah. Jesus hit her, you know. And the disciples of the Son of God also don't understand him. Because when he ignores her, they say, uh uh. Master, send her away. She's shouting. Send her away. Sometimes I wonder, what was in these men? You know, of course you'd say, ah, but you know Jesus was... No, 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 yes, but I understand. But I wish they were beholding the spiritual mind of God in this. 
Jesus was not intending to, to lash away at a person. No. Jesus was intending to establish a fundamental truth that would benefit 2018. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus was not just interested in putting this woman to shame. If they beheld the spiritual thing, they will probably have said, you know, let's watch and see what the master is up to. Uh-uh, they were quick to judge. Send her away. Send her away. Do you understand what I'm saying? Imagine a, a Gentile. One, of course, these people are thinking from a Jewish culture. The Jews never mixed with the Gentile. You understand what I'm saying? Even worse off, go beyond the Gentile. It was illegal during that time for Gentile women to come close to some of these Jews. On top of that, she's a woman and she's a Gentile. It's even worse. You understand? That's what you realize in Scripture. It wasn't always easy for women to approach Jesus. Not all. You see some pressing through to touch him. You, you get my point? Because that was culture. It was Jewish culture. Now the Son of God, the creator of heaven and earth, has a serious challenge, a serious issue. And this is that this woman has come for healing. She's a Gentile. She's, she's not a partaker of the promise. And Jesus tells the woman up square in the face, I was sent to the lost house of what? Israel. Has not sent to the Gentiles. Was that true? No, it was not the truth. But Jesus was trying to prompt a certain faith in this woman's life that will help you in 2018. Her child is sick. You understand what I'm saying? If that woman walked off the ground and said, you know what? It's all right. Let me bury my kid. By the way, what man of God are you? No, 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 seriously. What man of God are you? What, what man of God are you? Huh? You don't even have a heart. Yeah, I, I don't even blame you. You're not a parent. You understand? They would have, they would have done anything. In the equation also to equal up the square of why Jesus had not prayed for her daughter. But also, on the other hand, I want you to understand this was a desperate mother for her child. You know, if you're a parent, you understand what I'm talking about here. Some of us parents know. You understand? This was a mother pleading for the deliverance of her child. And then Jesus says that I have not been sent to the Gentiles, but I have been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, the Bible says, the moment Jesus said that, she acted like she didn't hear anything. And the Bible says, she went and worshipped him. Who is following what I'm saying? This woman knew exactly what she wanted. She was a Gentile, it's true. She, she did not deserve any miracle, it's true. She did not deserve any breakthrough, it is true. She was not a son of Abraham, it is true. She was not of the lost house of Israel, it is true. And it tells her clearly, I was not sent to Gentiles, I was sent to the lost house, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what does she do? The Bible says she goes on the man's feet and worships him. This was somebody who was telling God whether rain or sunshine, wh whether there's anything or nothing, whether there's a reason or not, I need a miracle. Somebody shout hallelujah. And it gets better. It gets better. And the Bible tells us, he answered while she's worshipping him. He says, it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. You're a dog. Are you hearing me? This is a woman at the feet of Jesus worshipping him. He says, ah, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. The woman still on the feet worshipping him. She says, Lord, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from your master's table. As in, I, I, I need a miracle. Who 
is following what I'm saying. And the Bible says, Jesus answered and said, Oh, woman, what great faith. What great faith. The first time I read about Jesus pronouncing great faith was over a Gentile, not a Jew. It's amazing that those without the covenant had greater faith than those which were in the covenant. Who has understood what I just said? The Jews had a covenant. It was already spelled out on their destiny, their posterity and history. But here is an example of people who are not under a covenant. The Roman centurion, he was not under a covenant. He was a Roman. He was the army that had besieged and overtaken Israel. They were the bosses of the Jews. They had enslaved. And this man comes to Jesus and tells him, Look, see, I am a man under authority. When I tell my servants, go, they go. When I tell my soldiers, jump, they do it. Just send your word. And God looks at this man and tells him, Oh, what great faith. For I have not seen this great faith, he says, in Israel as is in you. That means when he says Israel here, is he looked at people who are under the covenant and says, I have not seen any faith that matches you under the covenant. But I've seen great faith. From a man without a covenant. And Jesus repeats a similar issue on a woman whose child was vexed with an evil spirit. Same situation, same circumstances, only different scripts a bit, but it's the same idea and idea. That again, a gentle woman comes to Jesus. She wants a miracle. She is a dog. She cannot eat of, with a Jew. She, 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 she is not of the household of Israel. But yet, the Bible says, Jesus says, Oh, woman. What great faith. What am I trying to tell you here? Sometimes we lose the person in the covenant. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we lose the person of Jesus in the covenant. Sometimes we cannot separate the covenant from the person of Jesus. Sometimes we do not understand but the covenant is the person. We separate the covenant from the person. Do you understand what I'm saying? This gentle woman is trying to say, you and the covenant are one. I'm not separating you from the covenant. Yes, it is clear that there's a difference between you, which comes to redeem the children of Israel and the covenant that God has with them. But I don't see you and the covenant different. You and the covenant are one and the same. Your heart is the same for all who come to you through faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. If a Gentile, stranger to the covenant of the promise, has enough faith to get healing for her child, how much more you? Hey. If a, a Gentile has enough faith to get healing for her daughter, Jesus in the allegory defined that miracle as bread off the master's table. <laughs> Who has understood what I just said? Jesus defined the miracle as bread off the master, crumbs of bread off the master's table. If crumbs off the master's table can heal a woman's child, what is on this table? Somebody shout hallelujah. He said healing is the children's bread. That's how I know. That when it comes to the New Testament creature, health is not an option. We don't plead with you to be healthy. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is ready on the table. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say when it comes to divine health, I have no option. Say, when it comes to divine health, I have no choice. I have no choice. Tell anybody I have no choice but to be healthy. Tell him I have no choice but to be strong. I have no choice but to live a long life. That is irrespective of what is happening around you. Somebody shout hallelujah. That has no bearing with what is happening in your life. This one is a testimony of the covenant and the person. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when I saw that the greatest attempts of faith 
were around people without the covenant. I started to see that sometimes the covenant used to blind men from accessing the person of God. Yet it was the very thing that God needed for men to access God. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why he changed it. That is why you have a new covenant established on better promises. Because when we were under the law, the Bible says we were held in bondage therein. The covenant Israel had with God gave Israelites an impression of disqualification. That is why great faith was not found in the Jew. But it was easily found with the Gentile. Because the Gentile did not have to come to God from a covenant perspective as the Jew did. And the Bible says, and finding fault with the covenant. He found fault with the covenant. He found fault with them. He tells you that it would not have been changed if it was perfect. The Bible says, but finding fault with them. Huh? Listen to verse 7. Verse 7. For if the first covenant, listen, had been faultless, then should no place have been sold for the second. But the Bible says, for finding fault with them. Did you hear that? Because the first covenant had a fault. And it had a fault because it found fault on men. Who has understood what I just said? The first covenant was not faultless. It had fault on it. Why was it faulty? Because it found men fault. It put fault on a man to disqualify him from the promise. That's the first covenant. That means... The reason why great faith is not found with a Jew, it is because according to the law of Moses, the covenant God had met with them, it had to find fault with them. And finding fault with them caused them to be less of partakers of the very covenant with which they were given. Listen, if that first covenant was perfect, the Bible says there would not have been a need for a second. There would not have been a need for a second covenant if the first one was perfect. Somebody said hallelujah. The message Bible says, if the first plan, that is the old covenant, had, listen, worked out, a second wouldn't have been needed. But the first covenant did not work out. And the next verse says, but we know that the first was found wanting. It was found wanting. Why? Because no man could match that covenant. No, even if you try. Listen, if you're still under Moses, I have good news for you. You're going to die. It's not prophecy. It is knowledge. It is not a special revelation the Lord gave me last night. The Bible says, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Somebody shout hallelujah. The problem is, new creation realities have not been so embedded in our system of knowledge that many times we are new covenant creatures functioning on an old covenant system. And many of us don't even know it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many of us don't even know that we are a new creation, but we function under an Old Testament dispensation, an old covenant dispensation. Maybe let me use simple reasoning here to ask you the question. If the first covenant was faulty because he found men at fault, if he decides to make a second covenant, would it be faulty? And if it is not faulty, would it take men to fault? Ayah. Who has understood what I just said? If Jesus, God himself said, let me adjust this thing to make it faultless. To a place where I will not find them with fault. You understand what I'm saying? For a moment, imagine if you're under a covenant that will not find you with fault, 
do you want to tell me that it does not have the innate ability to cause you to walk faultless? It has the power to make you faultless. Somebody said the covenant Amanda. Hey, the covenant Amanda has the power to cause me to walk faultless. That is why there are scriptures that don't scare me. There are scriptures some people read and then they're like, oh. no, but me, when I read them, I get excited. I'll give you one. He's coming for a church without spot, no wrinkle. Musumba. Don't you have a spot? Do you have a wrinkle? Exactly what I'm trying to say. Under this covenant, he intends to perfect that which concerns me. Why? Because he is the author and the finisher of my... Of your what? Of your what? Do you know that you're saying faith? Or you're just repeating the scripture? Somebody say he is the author and the finisher of our faith. That means believing is, is authored by him. He's the poet of it. He, he, he believes through me. I don't have a choice but to have faith. Somebody say I'm a child of faith. Whoa! I'm a child of faith. I don't lack in faith. I'm not short of faith. Say I'm full of faith. Say it again and say I'm full of faith. Faith is me and I'm faith. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. I don't even worry that I will not have faith tomorrow. I am persuaded I will have faith tomorrow. As it is, I have faith today. As it is, I have faith next year. As it is, I have faith next month. I am a child of faith. Tell your neighbor, I am a child of faith. I'm a child of faith. I'm a child of faith. I'm a child of faith. Tell your neighbor, I'm a child of faith. I am a child of faith. I'm a child of faith. Because he's the author. I simply allowed him and I said, you know what, Jesus? Take the wheel of faith. That's the faith of the Son of God operating in me. So, that is why the Bible speaks of us being established on better promises. He's the mediator of that new covenant. He's not Moses and he's not yourself either. He that began a good work in you, the Bible says, he shall see it to accomplishment to the day of Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, if a woman without a covenant had great faith, and God changed the covenant, eh? let me ask it again. If a woman without a covenant had great faith, under the covenant that was faulty because it found men of fault, and God gives you a new covenant that cannot find you faulty, are you even now in the realm of great faith? That's why he says greater things. He says greater things. That's why he says you are more than a conqueror. He says you're more. You're more. You're more. You're more. You're more. You're more than a conqueror. You don't go to him the way she went. No, no, no. He says, come boldly. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, come what? Boldly. So we don't go to him like, you know, Jesus. Yeah? Some people, when they are preaching, they say, even you, you might be there, like the Gentile woman, and she needed a miracle, and Jesus stands away, keep insisting, and Jesus stands his back, hang on, and he says, no, keep praying, insist and say, even dogs, God, I'm a dog. No! He told us, come boldly to the throne of what? Knowing that you shall what? Receive mercy and what? Grace to help in time of what? Of need. We don't go to God with... Let your will be done. Yeah. The Bible says he has made known unto you the mystery of his will. We, I know what the will of God is for my life. Somebody say, I know what the will of God is for my life. 
He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. I know, I know the plans that, I know the plans that I, I, woman, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to make you prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope, to give you a future. That expected it. I know the plans that I have for you. And he says, plans not to harm you. Plans not of evil. That is when God is planning. Somebody shout hallelujah. When God is planning for you. When God is planning for you. He has no thoughts of evil. He has no thoughts of harm. He has only faith and peace. I want to read in the NIV. He says, for I know. Let's read. One, two, let's go. Uh Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Come on, somebody. Say it again. Say, for I know the plans that He has for me, declares the Lord. He says, He plans to prosper me and not to harm me. He plans to prosper me. Say it again. Not to harm me. Say it again. He plans to prosper me. And not to harm me. Say it again and say he plans to prosper me. And not to harm me. To give me a hope and a future. So when I look at you and I look at where you're going. That's why he says do not worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tell your neighbor, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has its own to worry. It is worried about you. (laughs) Somebody shout hallelujah. It is thinking, how will she eat? What will he dress? Which car is he going to drive? Hurry and make it quick. Because that's his portion. That is his testimony. That is his covenant. I have plans. I promised him. I promised her that I will prosper her. I will not harm you. No. God, this is, you've punished me so much. Uh-uh. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you. He says, I know. You, you might, but me, I know. Stop accusing me of your failure. I know the plans that I have for you. Stop accusing me of why things are not moving for you. I I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. I will not harm you. Does that mean you've not made mistakes? He knows that you've made mistakes. But he says, no, I will not harm you. I want to win you over by love. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now that we have a new covenant established on better promises, we are not even in the realm of great faith. Somebody say, I'm no longer in the realm of great faith. The faith in my life is greater. The faith operating in my spirit is far greater than has been written before. And that's the truth. So there are people who are, but I don't have faith like you. No, you have it. You just didn't know. Now I'm making you know that your faith is because of the covenant. Somebody shout hallelujah. Maybe let me make it simpler for you. Do you know that not finding you with fault is the reason of the doctrine of righteousness? And how many of you know that the righteousness of God is the rightness of God? That means that everything that pertains to the mind of God, you're right. Everything that pertains to... When you say, let me pray for healing, you're right to receive it. When you say, let me speak into the atmosphere for a couple of dollars, you're right. That's why Paul says, for the God that I, Timotheus, the the God we spoke, in him there was no nay. The God we preached, there is... There's another one which people preach. No. He says, the God me, Timothy, Kevin, that God we preached. The one, that one we preached. He said, in him there was no name. I don't know the one you know. 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But the God that Timothy has preached, the God that Paul preached, the God that Apostle Grace, Sylvanus, take away in Yariao. No, come on, read it. He said, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who has preached among you by us, even by me, Sylvanus and Timothy, was not yea and nay. Woo! The God that Timothy, Sylvanus, and I preached, the Cephasus and Apostle Grace, the, the, he did have those moments, but today, no. Mm, wait. Here. Mm, no. In that God, there was no nay. But the Bible says, in him was yeah. In him was what a covenant. Papa Wanjaka, yeah. Papa God, divine health. Mm-hmm. Big building, big. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I, I. And then he gets to the point of before you ask, I will answer. So you come. So I imagine you coming to him and says, Papa God, I. Yeah. Somebody said, Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. It's yours. It's yours. Don't worry, it's yours. That is why me, when I ask, I ask. Eh? I don't spare. Mate, you see God. <laughs> okay, this one might be higher, but no, no, no. The best. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have learned to be extravagant in prayer. Somebody shout hallelujah. One time, somebody came to me a couple of years ago and said, me, if God gives me 300,000, my life will change forever. The Holy Spirit told me, very loud, he said, I won't. I said, yeah. why? And Lord told me, no, that is not me. If he knew who he is. You know, when you come to God, you must know that he is. Your God doesn't want to give you 300,000 shillings. No! He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Come on, Mulokoli. He doesn't want to give you, if you give me 200k, ah, the Holy Spirit told me, no, 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 that's not me. She's talking to another God. I've not, I can't, I can't. She's not talking to me. She's not talking to me. She's talking to another God. He, sorry, he was a he. And man, I looked at that guy's life. Eh? Things failed to change for him. I've seen the man's life for many years. He has struggled and struggled, but things have failed to turn for him. Many years ago, the guy is still... I, you know someone who graduates and they fail to even get a job all their life? Because the way they see God... It is not the God Timothy as Sylvanus and I preach. Now, if you know that you have been given everything, why do you spare? You understand what I'm saying? The Baganda said, What you wear, Yeah, if the man is there, eat it. If the clothes are there, put them on. Hallelujah. If the cars are there, drive, let them speak. So, me, I don't quer umia. No, 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 no. I don't quer umia. No, 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 no. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are a child of the most high. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say I'm a child of the most high. So that's why our testimony is greater faith. In this ministry, every time we talk about faith, we'll say greater faith. Not great faith. We're children of greater faith. We are children of greater faith. Tell your neighbor we are children of greater faith. Greater faith. Greater faith. Greater faith. If great faith can heal a child, you have greater faith. If great faith can heal a Roman centurion servant without a covenant, you have greater faith. 
So when Jesus looked at you and your story, he knew you were definitely going to do greater things. And I'm, I'm ready. I don't know about you. Me, I am what? Ready. But Nange, you can't feed on this stuff and not get high. These are seeds we are planting. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Every morning you're hearing Sunday, Thursday, they're in your car. You understand me? If you continue hearing, the Bible says you're, you're translated, you're metamorphosed from one realm and measure of glory into another, into another, into another. Somebody shout hallelujah. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. For the Lord is that Spirit. That is why I'm believing God for greater things for you. I said I'm believing God for greater things for you. Greater works. He said, shall you? For us, healing in this ministry, for example, healing. Healing happens so easy here. How many of you have noticed? Sometimes we just see people, hey, he's walking. Because there are greater things. There are greater things. There are greater things to believe for. That is why you have to be healthy. Tell your neighbor, I have, I must. Sit in a choice. Yes, you don't have it. You don't have it. You don't have it. I have every time sat on my bed and I've imagined where we are going as a people. And what we are becoming every other day as we continue to hear these things. And I'm thinking, Banange, the world is in trouble. Somebody shout hallelujah. I think to myself and I'm like, but where are we going with greater faith? The Lord told me something. It was about two years ago. The Lord told me, a time is going to come and it's not fast in the foreseeable future, the near future. When they say, who are the richest people on the face of the earth? They'll be here. They'll be in this ministry. They'll be here. They'll be here. They'll be here. We are tired of rich people who don't know God. Who act like they know God but they don't. They start speaking, they are Christian, but when they speak, something is not coming out. I am pastoring the richest people the world has ever seen. Just give it a couple of years. We shall feed orphans. No, no, we're not going to use money for just pop. No, we're not going to waste it. We're going to build the kingdom of God. Uganda is the altar of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sometimes all we need to do is to just take off that thing. Some of you are like a soda bottle that just needs to... And then you pour it out like an offering. I know that the most influential people the world has never seen, they are seated next to you. The woman and man you're sitting next to in a few weeks, in a few years, some people are going to look at you and I bet you they will say, this is not a Uganda. No, she did not come from Uganda. Greater faith. We're going to build castles in the sky. We're going to do things people cannot imagine are doable. They will look at us and say, these are not human beings. These are something else. These are something else. We know the covenant with which we've been put under. Some of you, I know, certain things have not changed yet. But it's only yet. Those are just three letters. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It is only a yet. But things are turning. All you need to do is to change the spiritual first. And deal with your spirit man. The physical will come. There are people here in circumstances you don't even know. Financial issues, you don't even know how to come out. When you look at yourself, you're like, but how will I come out? How? I, listen, that's why I came to talk to you. God is not only going to take you out, but you're even going to lose the smell of it. People
people will find it so hard to believe that you once struggled to pay a loan. They will find it hard to believe that you once struggled for fees and food, for rent and clothes. They will say it's not possible. The things you will do, they will say these things can only be done in a hundred years of work. And some of you are going to do in days to the glory of God. Some of you have great ministries in you. Great, great, great ministries in you. People will say, but this is supposed to take 20 years. This is supposed to take 30 years. This is supposed to take 40 years. This is supposed to take 50 years. This is supposed to take 60 years. How could she do it in a day? The Bible says, can a nation be born in one day? But it says, behold, I do a new thing. For it shall spring forth. Isaiah said, who shall believe our report? Do you know why he said who shall believe our report? Because the things that are going to happen to you, men will struggle to believe. We're entering the time and dispensation where the church is going to be feared. The things you will do, people will say, I mean, they will see it and say, I cannot believe. Receive it. They will say, I cannot believe that this is happening in her life. I cannot believe that this is happening in his life. We are not few. We are not weak. We are not disadvantaged. Don't be deceived by your clothes. Don't be deceived by the house you live in. Do not be deceived by what they told you last week. Don't be diverted. No, no, no. He says, for oh, our light affliction, a light affliction, I don't care how big the issue is. He says, for oh, our light affliction, which is bad for a moment, it cannot be compared to the word of glory that shall be revealed. Why we look not at the things which are seen, for the things which are seen, the reports are seen, the things microscopes see, the things binoculars see, the things cameras see, the things your eyes see, they are temporal. But it says the things which are not seen, they are eternal. on somebody speaking tongues say something greater greater the words you're speaking right now are defining your next two years your next four years somebody literally is changing their next six years their next seven years come on This is the part where you speak for yourself. Tell God what you feel. Call it out. You, you might look like you don't know what you're doing. You might look like you're foolish now. You might look like you're hopeless now. You might look like there is no way out now. But God is true. Mukama Tarima. God is no man that he should lie. O Sharaba Katata. Shabra Katakata. Shabra Katakata. Shamanda Dakaraba. Zuko Potolo Bakaya. Shita tata tata baba baba, shara mango zobo kosta. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come on, receive it. This is your day. Receive it. Come on, Holy Ghost. Kasha baba baba kapa. Rabata kata kata kata, 
Shamatalamando Homoso, Cabrando Zibakashi Caprikete, Zisekete Remando Robo, Sharamando Sikaraba, Sharamando Zobobo, Sheremama Baba. Something is happening. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Come on, fix your future, fix your children, fix your family. Now, the Bible says, when you ask, believe that you have received. That's why you're clapping. Believe that you've received. That's why you're clapping. Clap louder. Let me tell you something. I might not say this every day. I might not say this every day, but I'm so blessed to have you. I'm so blessed to have the most anointed, the richest, the greatest, the strongest, the wisest. I'm a blessed man. When I look at your future, I am a blessed man. I don't worry about anything. Because I have, I have seen the glory of God. My eyes have seen the glory of God. I've seen what you're going to become. I am, I am persuaded of the future you guys have. I thank God for each one of you every day. Making mention of you in my prayers every day because i know what you're going to become you are a wonder you're a marvel i know it i know i know it i know what you are you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International.
For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.